What did they say? <clears throat> Nothing serious. I lost another one of my nine lives. Oh, this hurts. Got many left? I'm in the red. <sighs> you haven't woken up yet? Nope. We're gonna be here a while. Vulpine, seven letters. Scheming? Hmm. You think that's the same thing? I don't know. Sounds a bit off to me. Wait, I know. Vulpine, seven letters. Cunning. What are you looking for? Nothing. Will he live? He'll live. So what have you found out? Randall Lee. Apparently in love with our penitentiary system, judging by the frequency of his visits. Theft, assault, extortion. You know, minor things of the sort. Any partners? Always works alone. He's never ratted out his employers, provided they exist. Did you find anything? Is this our man? Do you have proof? Hmm. Looks like we know who tore his pants following Clarice Freeman up to the rooftop. His pants have a tear in them. I found a piece of that same fabric at the gym, on the stairs that lead to the rooftop where we found the second body. Makes sense, but how many pairs of ripped pants are walking around New York City? <laughs> I don't call that evidence. The guy who broke into the gym in Dunn's place has a thing for sardines. Did you smell his breath? Right. Because there's only one sardine fanatic on this side of the Hudson. I need something more. I saw footprints from those very same shoes next to both the gym murders. Unless you're telling me that she was a limited edition, I'm gonna need something else. One of the thugs that attacked me the other night had a snout just like his. I'm sorry, but you can't incriminate someone based solely on species. What else you got? What more do you need? I've given you four pieces of evidence. None of which are conclusive. He tried to throw me off the rooftop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He's our man. No, he's not our man. Make up your mind. He's just a puppet. Someone is pulling his strings. Hmm. Could it be Yale? He's hiding something for sure, but I don't think he did it. By the way, was he discharged? His room is empty. They let him out yesterday. 
He's in police custody now. You can tell he's an athlete. Made quite the comeback. Anyone else would have taken ten times as long. Anyway, he better be fine. You know they've ordered me to escort him to Madison Square Garden on the day of the fight. That's the first I hear of it. Quick, what do you want? Good cop or bad cop? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Good thing someone took out the trash. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lee. I assume you're aware that you're about to be accused of murder, and that thanks to the witness testimonies of Mr. Blacksad and Miss Dunn, your future is not looking too good. Go to hell, you dog. If I choked you with a pillow, nobody would know. You should already be dead. Blackhead, stay out of this. Remember who's the cop here. Maybe we can offer you a deal. We know someone hired you to kill Joe Dunn and Clarice Freeman. What do you have to say? I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. Your friend, the Hell Horse, doesn't seem to feel that way. Although I'm afraid he won't be talking anymore. Shut up, or I'll kick you out. If you tell us who hired you, we'll help you. What can you offer me? We could significantly reduce your sentence. I could testify that you helped me on the rooftop. You're pathetic. Is that why you never got in the police force, Black said? Did you fail the good cop, bad cop test? I won't say a word. And believe me, you stand to lose. Care for a piece of advice? If I were you, I'd fear for my life. I'm afraid that- Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone. So I went back to my previous lead. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing.
Hello, Smirnoff residence. Your dad. Your... No, I got you with my lasso. Can you quiet down, kids? Dan got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime. Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right, that could be some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's diner just four days before his death. Scram, you son of a bitch! I have some questions for you. Oh, well, maybe I don't have answers for a pussy. It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. Come on, spit it out. I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough. Dunn had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Dunn said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute! What does public health services have to do with that chimp? We worked together at the Consumer Protection Office. He came in pretending to be a client, and you insulted him. Me? Well, I barely even talked to him. Which is even worse. Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be? If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers.
Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. the four bases guarding their father. I've never trusted angels. When they fall, they turn into demons. If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects.
Joe Dunn met with someone at the diner, close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house, so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. I would have never guessed the person's identity. I've always been a New York Warriors fan, although, to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yet, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place, a glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. I'm John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. Why did you meet with Joe Don? Because he was looking for me. He came here one morning, but I was too embarrassed to come down because he left a baseball with his initials on, on by the tombstone. Sam Steiner, tomorrow, 12.30 a.m. Because he, he knew they want to kill me. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? One question at a time. My turn. What did Dunn want from you? He wanted to know who was playing dirty in the sporting business. Dirtier than usual, that is. Wrecked lives, careers, ruined at the top of the game. He wanted to know if the same had happened to me. He wanted to know if the end of my career and my disappearance had anything to do with all that. He wanted me to confirm who was behind it all. The guy who had him killed. Our old friend, the surgeon. Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he? My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. Because I take my job very seriously. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Hey. 
Hey, that toss was... Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him. So, what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three, since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I have the feeling there's something Craig didn't tell me. I don't know what exactly, but I'll find out. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it could make sense. Ha! <laughs> Who's the detective now? Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. But what about O'Leary? Um, six. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah, I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through, so he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So, you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. 
And you know why? Because in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American who done it, where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. You mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings? I didn't say that. How did it go with Helen Moore? Uh, I didn't get anything. Even though it started out really well, I asked to interview her along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Here's one for both of you. How did you meet? At the party organized by Des- Ow! Who threw the party doesn't matter one bit. What matters is that I saw you and you saw me. Our paths crossed and our lives were changed forever. Okay, now... Time for a picture. How should we pose? Okay, how about a hug? I want to feel the love. You're the envy of all America. Moving on. Here's one for Helen. Can you tell us how much Champies pays you to endorse them? Sure, honey. They pay me much more than I'd ask them for. In fact, Champies is so delightfully delicious that I'd even do it for free. Does that answer your question? Uh, no. Nonsense. We both know it does. Now what? Mind if I take another one? You want us to do something in particular? Show me your weapons. Uh, the fist against the racket. That's it. Perfect. Okay, one more question, and... Oh, Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. All right, so uh, where were we? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. Let's get that picture taken. Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. What's with me today? Don't move, please. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? 
Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. I'm going to take one more, all right? Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. I can't seem to get it right. Don't move. It's about time. Finally. We're all set. Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed? Or is that what you said to Stone? <laughs> Both. Just look. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. How the hell did you make them pose like that? They're lovers, not sworn enemies. I don't know. I was focused on my detective skills. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse? Or putting it in. That's a decent picture, but it doesn't tell the truth. Huh? Of course it's the truth. I was there. Stone isn't as strong as he looks, and Moore certainly doesn't need him to lift her up. How much do you think each bicep weighs? A lot, but less than your tongue. <laughs> You're hilarious. Hmm. I've seen that matchbox before. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. Right. We still have to find him. Mm. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. 